going to instruct in making a Windows 7 bootable USB using the commercial OEM ISO. I'm going to make this bootable USB for a UEFI BIOS, so I will also add USB 3.0 support and NVM Express support. So the first thing we'll need is Rufus and we'll need the commercial OEM ISO. If you don't already have these, you'll need to see my earlier tutorial video. In this case, I'm using a Windows 8.1 virtual machine. This may be necessary for the USB 3.0 slipstream. So the first thing I'm going to do is insert the USB flash drive and then I'm going to double click on Rufus. I'm going to check that the USB flash drive is listed to the top and then I'm going to load the ISO and then select open and now I'm just going to perform a quick check to see if I have a UEFI BIOS so I'm going to press Windows and R and I'm going to type in msinfo32 and then press enter and the film that we're most interested in is the SM bias version. If it's 2.7 or later, then you should have a UEFI bias. If you don't have a UEFI bias, you'll need to change the partition scheme to the MBR partition scheme or bias. If you've got this setting selected, the file system should be NTFS you can press start and then make your bootable USB. None of the other additional steps in this tutorial video are necessary. If you do have a UEFI BIOS however, you'll need to select the GPT partition scheme for UEFI and the file system should be FAT32. Once you've made this selection, select start and wait for Rufus to complete the bootable USB. This bootable USB will not have USB 3.0 support or NVM Express support. When Rufus is finished making the bootable USB, it will say ready and you can now close down Rufus. Intel have a USB 3.0 creator utility, however in the last tutorial video I made, several users had multiple problems with it. Since I have to manually slipstream the NVM Express and the convenience rollup, I'll also manually slipstream the USB 3.0 drivers. So the first thing I want to do is mount the ISO. And then I just want to copy all the files and what I want to do now is make a new folder on C drive and call it Win7 with no spaces and I just want to paste all the files from the ISO to this folder. Next thing I want to do is create a folder called updates, again directly on the C drive. And I want to copy the following four updates to it. The April servicing stack, the NVM express updates and the convenience roll up. And finally, I want to make a third folder and call it drivers. So we'll open the Intel USB 3.0 creator utility and we'll copy the x64 drivers over to this. And now what we want to do is open up the following file in notepad. I'll save a link to it in the description. So at the top of this file, what we're doing is creating temporary folders. To the first temporary folder, we're going to extract the boot.wim file and add USB 3.0 support. Then we're going to commit the changes. Then to the next temporary folder, we're going to 
extract the first edition of Windows 7 on the ISO, add the updates, add the drivers, commit the changes, and we're basically going to repeat this process for every single edition on the ISO. Then finally we'll remove all the temporary folders. So in order to run this file, what we need to do is go to File Save As and change the extension to .bat and save as type to all files. So now what we want to do is right click the .bat file and select run as administrator and then accept the user account control prompt. It will take some time to run the batch file. If you think about what you're doing in the background, you're essentially extracting all the Windows 7 installation files, then adding a service pack as well as some other updates, and then you're adding drivers, and then you're repackaging the installation files. And then you're doing this for every single edition on the ISO. So take it as approximately eight times the time it takes to install Windows 7. In my case, I've sped up the recording significantly. However, you can use the system clock as guidance. Since I just made a basic batch file, the command prompt will just finish once it's completed all the steps. You'll not get any notification telling you the progress is finished. So don't worry if it just closes after finishing. What's important to check is the file size of the boot.wim and install.wim later on. If you're using an English ISO, they should match the file sizes that I have. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the bootable USB and we're going to look in the sources folder for .wim files. And now what we're going to do is we're going to open the Win7 folder on the C drive. And again, we're going to open up the sources folder and look at the .wim files. So you'll see that the boot.wim is slightly bigger and the install.wim is significantly bigger now. And now we're just going to select these two files and we're going to copy them over to the bootable USB, replacing the original ones. So we'll select replace the file in the destination. And we'll just wait for the files to copy over. There is one additional file in the sources folder called the ei.cfg file. This is the only file that is different in all the retail and commercial OEM ISOs for the English language. So what we can do is essentially open this file in Notepad and we'll see that this file essentially selects the addition during installation. If we go ahead and delete this file, then we'll be asked what edition of Windows 7 we want to install during installation. The bootable USB 3.0 flash drive is now ready.